<laughs> Let's get rid of the rock and roll. <laughs> We're coming off this. He's he's fresh off watching the Daytona 500. Man, I was like boogity boogity boogity. Let's go racing. Didn't go this year though. Well, and it's a good thing because it rained out. You know, well, then, and that's why I was like, this is the perfect year not to go. I'd gone you for live two a charmed years. life, Chris. You I really did. do. And so that's right. Instead of being there, I was out skiing, have a little fun in the Rockies, playing it up a little bit. That's right. But it's all come crashing back to earth as we get into 2024 to date ourselves a little bit and think about the crazy world that we're about to get into. I have noticed your uh, Tumblr bourbon tends to be fuller these last couple of weeks. It has been, and I'm telling, and the sleep has gone less and less, <laughs> less unless I passed out, uh, which I did uh, after our last podcast. <laughs> and my wife found me on the couch and said, "Hey," and I'm like, "Oh, oh my god, what time is it?" She says, nine. I said, "I got to go to work." She goes, "No, nine p.m." I'm like, "Oh, oh, oh geez. <laughs> <laughs> So, all right, enough about me and my completely not taking care of myself because we have a guy on the podcast today brady fuck which is the dog trainer i i actually i am think, so excited about this i know it actually alan was like oh this is gonna be a great episode i'm like why he says because finally we're talking about somebody who's not at home services and i know it's going to apply to all of our listeners i'm like all right we're gonna yeah. give this a shot there'll be people all around all continents all galaxies that we reach saying i got this nugget from a dog trainer Right, that I'm telling you what, that's where we're going. No pressure, Brady. Yeah, don't worry. Yeah, he's on. And we'll, we'll drag it out of you. If you haven't checked out our YouTube channel, the Small Business Safari, you can see what I'm about to tell you guys is that Brady looks a lot like us. He's young, <laughs> very good looking, in shape, got a full head of hair, and then there's Chris and Alan, yeah. which are the exact opposite. So here we go. Two, two he's the rose between two thorns. Brady, welcome to the show, my man. Oh, thank you guys so much for having me. I'm excited. Um, before we begin, I want to let your guests know if you have a dog, great. We're going to talk about how to get them to be better, your dream dog. If you don't have a dog, we're going to talk about other things too, and we can take some leadership principles and some gratitude and some other perspective shifts out of there too. So I'm excited to serve and help when your audience find some wins. So Brady, what I want to know, just between you and me, are some of these techniques applicable for me training Chris without him knowing sure. like to sit or to pay attention what? focus, stop talking, that kind of thing. Can you help me with that? Have you ever seen The Office and you've seen that episode with Jim and Dwight where he like the computer screen turns on and he gives them a piece of, <laughs> yeah, same thing. Okay. You could easily do that. <laughs> Ding, drink. Uh, hello, I'm back. <laughs> hello. hello. It sounds like he's already trained you though with the bourbon. So yeah. watch yourself. <laughs> I know. Right. But to go back to what Brady said, if you're a cat lover, you can still listen to this show, but just not for nothing. We're talking dog stuff here. Come on, because the dogs rule the world, baby. All right, now let's get back into this. All right, Brady, uh, this is an, a very interesting, unique, and awesome niche. And one of, one of the things we've always talked about is that as far as you can niche down, the better it is. As they say, the niches bring the riches. So how did you come up with this idea? You know, it came out of necessity. I um, I got my first puppy when I was about 22 years old, and I grew up with dogs. I'm the oldest of six, and we had animals, but they were quite wild. Like, they would run away from home almost daily. They would get into trash cans, and some of them we had to let go to new homes because we just couldn't – we just didn't know what to do, you know? Sounds a lot like – So when I was 20 – <laughs> yeah. So when I, I was 22, I'm like, <laughs> I'm getting my own dog. I'm going to teach him how not to pee in the house. I'm going to teach him how to like be crate trained, all these good things. Right. Uh, and just having that thought wasn't enough because I, I bought him the best food and I let him sleep in my bed and I did all the things that my parents didn't do. Um, but it didn't work. I remember I left for like maybe like two hours to go hang out with some friends later at night. And I didn't, my dog wasn't crate trained. He would bark and we were in an apartment. So I just left him in my room. Like how much trouble could he get into? Um, and when I came back, I know, right, there was a chunk of carpet missing, there was like four piles of poop. And like, he got out and there was I had like a Father's Day present that was like in a box inside a box inside a box. And he like tore through all the boxes and like got this bag. And he ate my favorite Tim Ferriss Tools of Titans book, which I had just got right. It wasn't like the old book. It was like the brand new book that I just got. Oh, um, that's and, a big book too. And it's it, him, is it? Tim is a prolific author, and that is a big book to chew through. But this guy sounds a lot like my first employee. <laughs> I was going to say, I wish you had a video of that. He must have been having a big time. I mean, seriously, if you would have had a camera on that, I mean, you talking about whirling dervish, like that Tasmanian devil thing whipping around. 
I can't even imagine, man. He was, yeah. But that was my rock bottom. That was like, okay, this, that was, he was like six months old. I was like, I can't do this. I lost my deposit now. Like that, if you're not paying for a trainer, you're paying for it in other ways. And so there was a thousand dollars gone. There was books gone. There was a father's day present gone. And I was like, man, I'm going to go find somewhere I can go learn from. And that kind of sparked me into finding um, Susan Garrett. She was interviewed by Tim Ferriss. Uh, and she is one of the top dog trainers in the game. She's a 30 plus time world agility champion and she's won with every dog that she's had. So it's not like you're just lucky with one dog. She's repeated it. And I gave her thousands of dollars to learn. And, um, I've talked to her and, and been coached by her. And, uh, I started just getting my dog to a better place. And as I did that, my friends and family started noticing. So then I started helping them for free and I was still working my uh, I was working at Apple at the time and I was working in and out. And so I was just working like normal jobs. Um, and as I continued to do it, I was like, okay, this is cool. And I got into my first big boy job and I was working for like this insurance company. And it was the day after my birthday and they didn't even know it was my birthday, but business had been slow. This is right before, um, this is 2019. And I was the last one that they hired. So I was the first one that they let go. So they let me go like the day after my birthday. And I was like, well, this sucks. They gave me a good chunk of severance. And I was like, okay, well, this is the best time, better time than ever to start my own business. That's when I started like charging people $25 to start. And um, then COVID hit and I pivoted to Zoom lessons and now we're in a much better place. And, um, but that's kind of been my journey. So now I've trained service dogs to help out with like getting water bottles out the fridge. I worked at a farm animal refuge and I trained a pot belly pig how to paint and she's raised over ten thousand dollars for this nonprofit by selling her paintings. Um, I'm teaching my dog how to ride like a little skateboard right now. There's so much stuff that you can do with it um, as long as you're creative. It's been a lot of fun. So he can train a pot belly pig to paint. I bet you can't train me to paint. <laughs> I'm you, a little more stubborn. You hire painters, don't you? I do. Yeah, well, maybe I should start trading. That's kind of big. I was going to say, it's been tough. The yeah. labor market's been kind of tough lately. Yeah. That, <laughs> holy crap. Oh, my God. You're right. This There's so funny. much. There's so much. Thing, so many things to jump into. I mean, I want to jump in, yeah. in and out. I mean, what's your favorite burger? No, I'm kidding. But oh, let's go back. Oh, so, no. We can talk about that. What? Because what's your favorite burger? I like to ask everyone this question. So that you asked it, it's, it's serendipitous. Oh, I got to have it. So uh, here on the East Coast, we're at Ellen and I are from Atlanta. I had just gotten back from Vegas uh, a month ago and yeah. I had to go get an in out burger because I got to get the cheeseburger. It's and a double double animal style, isn't it? I, isn't that the order? I didn't do animal style. I don't know how you guys order. Yeah, I didn't animal style. You got animal style is not on the menu. You say animal style, and they throw like caramelized onions and stuff on it. I can't remember. We were always hammered when we did it, but yeah. <laughs> golf trips out. But... Sounds, sounds like one of our podcasts. Yeah. So, uh, so you guys so... are grilled onion guys, then? Yeah, absolutely. I'm gonna yeah. give you guys another secret. Can I? Sure. Yes, please. You go. can teach a dog how to grill onions. <laughs> um, I love onions, and so my burger, I do a whole grilled onion. So this isn't on the menu either. So you ask them to take the whole onion and they grill it fresh. It takes like eight minutes to like cook. So they throw it right on at the same time they're cooking the meat. Um, and you get a fresh, nice onion that's been grilled. Sometimes the grilled onion has been sitting there for a little long. Um, so it's like nice and fresh. And then I add some raw chopped onion too, just to give it a little bit of bite. Wow. But spread only. <laughs> so onions and spread really. There you go. You picked up a nugget. If you're in the West Coast going in and out, you can either go animal style or get a whole grilled onion. Either way, I'm doing both when I go back. Yeah. <laughs> well, because why just get one? Again, not trained. No. Uh, why? Not trained at all. All right. Me so you either. started. Yeah. Uh, so you were. You did. Uh, and this is what we talk about a lot in the transition of getting into small business and business for yourself. Sometimes it's forced upon you. Sometimes it's a choice. Uh, sometimes, you know, it, it just it falls in your lap. You're like, oh my god, what happened? So forced choice, and it fell in your lap. In your case, it was like, all right, now what? And you're like, well. Let's see. The last company that I got hired by fired me. So screw on my you. I'm birthday on my birthday, last corporate. Asks. Oh my god, they're so <laughs> asshole. We won't. We won't talk about that insurance company. They are not getting sponsored on this podcast because they have Brady now. So, did you have a business plan? Was this one of those things like, well, I don't know what else to do, and well, I can train something. So, uh, hey, for twenty five bucks an hour or whatever you did, did you have a plan? No, I was just kind of going into it. Like I had a plan for like what I want to train, but not like how to grow my business. And as I've been doing this, this is my sixth year now. Um, now that's becoming even more and more important, especially to, to continue growing and build the legacy that I want to build. 
but none of that was even a thought at the time. It was just like, what can I do to make some money? And this is a lot of fun. And I have a dog, so I might as well give him a lot of time. All right. So that's the beginning. Uh, out of necessity, you start building it. And, and I think this is what's going to be some really interesting conversation for everybody is that six years into it, how many people do you have working for you? Or is it just you? It's me and my girlfriend. She helps me schedule and like stay organized with a lot of things. But right now I've switched my model because at first I was just doing a bunch of one-on-one -on -one appointments or I would take your dog for two weeks and I would train them. But now I'm selling more of a process. So it's a three month process. 90 days gives me time to do uh, a lot more with the person and make sure it's ingrained more in them and that the person is actually transforming to become a dog trainer rather than like me training their dog for them and giving them back. And then they're like, okay, this is cool. They're better, but like, how do I keep going with this thing? So. So I love that pivot that, and I think everyone, hopefully everybody's picking up that nuance that you just said is that I realized that I could, I could train dogs between now and when I retire and he's a lot longer away from retirement mm -hmm. than you and I are, Alan. Um, or to scale and to figure out a way to better monetize my situation, I could start to teach people how to train dogs and people would probably mm -hmm. buy that service. So you're putting that out there. Tell tell us how how are you doing it? Are you doing it through uh, educational classes? Are you doing webinars? You have them out there where people sign into it and then sign up for your service for thirty days or ninety days or whatever that was. Yeah, man, I do a little bit of everything. I'm posting my stuff on social media, and I have little calls to action in there. Like, send me a DM. Like right now, if anyone's listening and they're interested in training a dog, send me a DM for dog training at ND Dog Training. Um, and I'll get back to you and I'll, I'll share a little free PDF with you to how to get started. Right. Um, and then I've also ran, spent a lot of money on Facebook ads. Um, Google ads have been a little bit better once I paid someone to help me get those dialed in. And then I love people. So I meet people out and about organically a lot of the time. So I'm taking dogs to different places and parks and people a lot of the time stop me and they're like, what are you doing? And then I'm like, well, I'm a little bit busy right now. I can't talk to you too much, but here's my card and I'll give you a call after. Uh, so I meet a lot of people around town in Austin. And so that's right. He's out of Austin, Texas. If you got a dog and it is ripping stuff up, taking down <laughs> puppies, he's taking down <laughs> tissue paper. He is that dog. Then you got to, you got to hook up with Brady in Austin. That's ND. That's, that's Nancy David dog and mm -hmm. Instagram, right? No underscore, right? No underscore. Nancy David dog training. Yep. So you're the, you're the quintessential solopreneur. And now you've got yeah. a system, you, you sort of backed into a business plan and now you've, you've mm -hmm. roped your girlfriend into this. And so the <laughs> two of you, you know, she's maximizing your schedule. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, just my wife has never been in my business, my friend, but I, that's a whole different. We're, we're not, that's not this podcast. Did you, did you get that from the <laughs> first Godfather? Don't ever ask me about my business, Kate. Um, so, that's but we where, where you're at right now is in order to make more money, you either have to somehow invent more time or you have to get more efficient or you have to charge more money. And that's kind of it. Or you somehow start bringing on people that you can teach to be trainers like you. So exactly. is that kind of where you're at right now? Yeah. The goal now for this year is to buy some land um, and start building a dog training facility and have more of a home base and be able to, from there, have more people come to me instead of me driving all over Austin and start training more people to become dog trainers. I love it. Yeah. Idea. You don't get paid for windshield time either. No. Yeah, I, I love this idea. Again, great pivot. So you're building on your skill base and your knowledge set, taking that knowledge set and being able to multiply it back to uh, Alan's point, which was a good point, Alan. I'll give you that. Yeah, I, I know. It. We we keep score here, uh, Brady. And it's uh, a big fat one to nothing right now. It is, well, well, we'll get there. Hey, right. There's plenty of time left. In this and game. that's all the time we have. What? No <laughs> way. And thank you for calling today, Brady. No, but uh, so, so finding that land. Score counter on top. <laughs> that's right. We, we actually we should yeah, have one. We, <laughs> you know what? <laughs> Brady, gold nugget. He just dropped one for him. I'm going to get that <laughs> back here. Yep. Yeah, yeah, right. We wouldn't even say anything. We'll just turn around and just make a mark. You can check marks. Yeah. All right. And then loser got to take a shot. <laughs> because I think, uh, if you think about, again, maximizing your time and charging more, mm -hmm. can you charge more for one dog for a really affluent person? Or can you charge more for one person who wants to train other dogs who maybe don't have that affluent person? I would say, if I'm investing in myself, I would pay thousands of dollars to be trained by Brady, the the dog whisperer, to have me go out there and train my own people. 
and train my own dog. And I learned that I think that's where the money's at. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. I, I don't know if I were, you know, a fat cat like Chris, I think I just want Brady to train my dog and give it back to me. I don't like little dogs. I don't <laughs> No little dogs. You know, no dogs, one? pain in the asses. Uh, big dogs. Uh... Are, are big dogs easier to train than little dogs? Because little dogs aren't very smart. <laughs> I, I I forgot <laughs> to do my pre-frame. Normally, I tell this at the beginning of every episode. But the average dog, and that's little dogs or big dogs or chihuahuas or border collies, the average dog can learn 165 words. That's most likely more than most people's dogs know. And I have a pretty good feeling your dog can learn like 20 or 30 more words quite easily if you just knew the right sequence to teach them this thing. And there's dogs out there who know thousands of words too. Really? So, Wait, that, like that's like 980 that. more than me. <laughs> <laughs> and what? like I have two guinea Girl. pigs behind me. You can't see them. But I've started training these guys to do little tricks too. So like... Guinea pigs, did you just say? Dude, you got to bring one on. Yeah. I mean, I don't care about podcasts. I know you guys are driving around in the car listening to stuff. <laughs> we'll describe it. We'll do, it's your chance to do play-by-play with the do, guinea pigs. That would be awesome. I've always wanted to be a play-by-play guinea pig <laughs> sports guy. <laughs> My dream was to be a sports announcer over guinea pig Olympics. Mm-hmm. I've always, I've, I'm now sharing that with you, Alan. So uh, here we go. Bucket list achieved. This is so cool. Yeah. All right. So we'll do guinea pig Olympics at the end. So, I, I, okay, again, you're putting this all together, but this takes a lot of time and effort as well, right? So your primary and your core business as a solopreneur is to go out there and make money for yourself, training people to train dogs or training dogs. And now you're like, but now on the side, my side hustle is I'm going to go find a piece of land. I got to put together a program. I probably need to get an investor. There. Uh-oh. Are you getting an investor? Mm-hmm. Uh, I have some people in mind. We haven't locked down anything yet. And we're still doing some research. Yeah. I take so, applications all the time. Ooh. I like working with people that I'm cool with. So, <laughs> Yeah, that's a good rule to live by. I'll tell you what. Yeah, I, I should have learned that one a long time ago. Because <laughs> I'll do anything to anybody here in the handyman business here in Atlanta. So, um, And sometimes we don't deal with people who are very cool or very easy to work with. But that's what happens mm-hmm. when you work with people in their homes. But the scaling idea here, it, it must be fun and exciting for you. And actually, I can tell already in your eyes, it is. This is, you're like, I'm jazzed about this. Yeah. Yeah. No, most definitely. And I paid $6,000 to join a speaking program to start building my voice so I could do more podcasts. And I have my first um, live virtual event in March that I'm going to speak to like parents and educators and stuff like that. So uh, that's a lot of fun for me too. But I did realize as I'm building out my value ladder, like I could just help someone train their regular dog, right? No value ladder, big Whoa, word. Whoa, yeah, big okay. word. I'm writing that down. All right. You may have to unpack that for people who aren't very smart like me, Brady. What is a value ladder? Uh, a value ladder is this idea that a lot of the times people are going to come in at your lowest offer. So like I have free PDFs or like a $7 potty training guide. And I even have an online program that I sell for $49. Um, and so that's like the bottom market to to get to know me and see if you, you know, like, or trust me. And then as we continue, there we go. <laughs> love that. Uh, I, got... <laughs> fired up. I love that. That's one of my mantras. All right, keep going. Yeah. So moving up the ladder, uh, we could do like an a la carte, like a two week board and train or like four in-person lessons, which some people, they've already trained with me. They're like, I just want four more lessons, Brady. And like, that's cool. That's like 400 bucks, 500 bucks. So like that's there. And then as we keep moving on, if you want like your dream dog, that's going to take us three months of like consistent practice, going to public places, going, working through distractions and obstacles. Um, that's my next step. That's $2,500. After your dream dog, um, some people need emotional support animals or therapy dogs. Um, so that would be the next step for someone, which would be $4,500. And then there's like service dogs. <laughs> yeah, you do. <laughs> I, do. I just don't want them on the plane with me. What about that emotional yeah. support peacock? Did you ever hear about that? Yeah, oh, I mean, yeah. Yeah. that's my favorite one. All right. So, but but back or to the alligator. value ladder, that is awesome. What you just talked about people coming at the lowest offer, you get a $49.95 offer, but you go all the way up to Dream Dog at $2,500 and then emotional support. Man, that is a genius move. So, when somebody reaches Thank out you. to you, do you just walk them through the various rungs of the ladder or do you just catch them on the lowest rung? And then once they get sort of hooked on your process then you let them know what else they can do it's kind of funny it depends where they find me if you find me on social media normally you'll get started on like the lower stuff 
but I, if I'm running my Google ads, if you're desperate and like, you just got a puppy and you're like, Oh, I need help now. And you message me. You, a lot of people message me for like service dog training. Like I want my dog to be a service dog. And I was like, okay, that's cool. That's more of an application process because I don't want to be the guy that's putting out tons of service dogs and like ruins the whole industry. Right. So from there, I'm like, okay, what do you actually really need? Maybe you need more of like an emotional support to pride therapy for you. If you do get really bad anxiety and you want to take your dog more places, or you just want a dog who can be calm around the house that you can play some games with, they'll fetch the ball and come back to you. Like, what is it that you actually really need right now? Most of the time people just need potty training and crate training and just to be able to chill. They don't back, need a service dog level. Back to sales in 2024. And uh, Alan, I'm going to say this too now. You're right. He is way, way cooler than I thought he'd be. I mean, actually, I thought that <laughs> the dog stuff, but the business side, that's how sales work in 2024. What do people want? Serve the people, then you find out what to do. Don't start the whole, with the product. Meet them where mm -hmm. they are, thinking groups. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Basically. Alan. I'm going to give you one. Thank you. I said that before. But Ta that's yay. awesome. Yeah. yeah. Well, I'm down two to one. Um, oh, and see, oh, I'm being two? fair. Okay. I'm being fair. But that's, it's a long game. See, I need a tracker. I know. <laughs> two, one, two, <laughs> one. So, but I think, Brady, man, you are so honored that there's so many great things about what you're saying. You can tell that um, if it's not ingrained in what, who you are, you're, you're definitely getting the coaching to help. And so that's where I wanted to pivot for a sec. You talked mm -hmm. about susan garrett in the very beginning have you brought her back in to come back and re-coach and help you again to build your business no that's one thing i want to pay for her inner circle and like have even closer proximity to her so i can start building more um but a lot of stuff i've gotten from her like she has her own online programs and like the dog training stuff um and this kind of stuff i've paid other coaches like i'm a big tony robbins guy um, and i paid other coaches to help me like get my business right so you you so that's that's where I want to get at, because uh, we always we've talked about this on a number of podcasts. When to get coaching help, when not to. When to uh, ask for help, when not to. It sounds like Brady's uh, investing not only in himself but in the future by asking other people how to do this better than him. So, who have been some of your mm -hmm. best coaches here as of late? Um, as of late, I'm part of. There's a guy. His name is Nick Santanastaso. Um, he has no legs, one arm. He's on Instagram. He's spoken on Tony Robbins stages, uh, but I'm part of his inner circle and mastermind. And he's helped me exponentially with getting my value ladder. He was actually the one who gave me the idea. He's like, you should train other dog trainers because I can charge $7,500 for a service dog, but I can start off at $10,000 for someone who's already making $50,000. Like, let me show you how to make $100,000. So now it's like, wow, there's really a net profit of $40,000 for them. And it's a much better deal. Um, and then even further, I have plans of doing, um, yeah, like portable dog training facilities. Um, so you can just like drop them and, um, anyone can just pick it up and start their own dog training facility anywhere. Oh, that smells like franchise. It does sound like franchise. <laughs> you like that, didn't you? Huh? Yeah, <laughs> Choo -choo. We're back in it, baby. I knew I told you. <laughs> I love those ideas all across the board. And, and that's where people who are not in our day-to-day -day when they come in and help us. And I've, I've had coaching over the years as well. Uh, and I'm starting to look for another coaching opportunity. I'm also part of a monthly master. Therapy doesn't group. count towards coaching, Chris. Oh, then um, then I haven't had any coaches. I've had a, I've had a lot of therapists, <laughs> but, but don't worry. I uh, think it counts. <laughs> if your mind's not right, you can't do anything long-term. Thank you. Right. <sighs> Anger man is crazy. I'm down. I'm laughing. All right. Oh, my gosh. We got a third player in the game, and now it's 2-2-1. Two, 2-2-1. Two, one. Two, two, Oh, Bree's feeling like, hey, he's like, you know what? I could do this. Shit. He's actually got you guys, with the value. You letter. guys think you got your podcast? Listen to mine. I'm better. Wait, <laughs> hang on, Brady. Don't you steal our show. All right, back to us. I mean, Brady, damn it. You guys are brilliant. I, I've tried hosting, and it's totally <laughs> different being a host than a guest. So it's a skill unto its own. It is. Uh, Bourbon helps. Having a friend helps. Always. Yeah, actually, I, I've said, yeah. I, I tried to do one of the uh, podcasts on my own, and it failed miserably. I was like, cause I'm trying to do it all. Keep track of the time, ask the right questions. And then nobody was sitting there going, Hey, be funny, Chris. I, I can't. <laughs> Who do I banter with myself? I was crazy. I know. I know. Actually, uh, you should see me in my office during the day uh, when I'm at my office. Yes. But all right, back yeah, to this. You see me training dogs. I'll like a lot of dogs bark when you knock. So I'll like knock at their own door and I'll be like, Hey, how you doing? You look so good, man. I like talk to myself and I'll, like, <laughs> I'll change my voice. They're like, what's going on? <laughs> Long conversations. 
Oh, I love that. It's, it's all part of the dog training process. So you actually have to tell them you have to get in character. <clears throat> and when, so you yeah. answer the door, you need to be one. And, but you got to understand where's your motivation? Where are you coming from when you're answering the door? <laughs> so you can change your, that's what we do on this concept. I love this. Otherwise we'll they see right through you. The dogs are like, that's a lie. No one's there. Oh. <laughs> so as you like, <laughs> like, I'll change my voice and they'll be like, <laughs> <laughs> like, who's that? <laughs> Dude, this is genius stuff. Got him again. <laughs> so in this niche market, uh, you've worked with mm -hmm. coaches. Um, and, and I love the idea that you've done this. As you've done your competitive research, uh, who else is out there doing something that you're doing? And you don't have to name their names. Um, but, I mean, again, because we don't want to give them air time. Screw them. But, I mean, it's got to – are there other people doing what you're doing? It's It's really interesting. There's – different types of dog training. So I think the three types of leadership, you got people who lead with like fear or um, intimidation, and then you got bribes or incentives. Oh, wow, those are kind of fun too. I found out why, I was why on did, a podcast. Why did Bubbles just come up and get fed on the screen? Chris, you're missing it. I did see that. Bribes and incentives. I saw that. I know. I was I was writing this down. I'm looking up and I see confetti flying. I'm like, what the hell's going on? Yeah. Here? Dude, I only had one bourbon. Oh, balloons, baby. Squirrels. I was on, oh, on that. another podcast and it happened and I was like, I've been hacked. What's happening? <laughs> and then I figured I was just an iOS update. So then I figured out how to use them. <laughs> but still, sometimes they get me. That's funny. Um, I'm still, I'm still, okay, what are we talking about? He's, he, I don't even know because he's got me. So I'm trained. Yeah. Now oh Chris God. is waiting for more balloons. <laughs> right. So it's a and, and where's my, where's my response treat? going on. Where's, yep. where's my treat, Alan? Where's yep. my treat? Yep. Skinner. <laughs> <laughs> all right so uh no you said leadership bribery and what was oh, no, I'm oh sorry, yeah no, was and then growth and assholes, that's right. <laughs> intimidation right um and then growth and inspiration so most people you can think of a leader who use fear to inspire you right it was like do this or you're going to get the belt um at least was my childhood and then you got people who bribe you and they're like hey i got ice cream but then the challenge is next time I'm like, I want chocolate syrup too. Like I don't just want the ice cream. So like incentives go down a slippery slope. Um, and then finally, I'm sure you've had a teacher who just inspires you to do the hard things and to grow and go get more information and just to, to persevere. And that is the, the last type of leadership of what I time to aim for. So with dog trainers all around, there's dog trainers in each category. And then you got dog trainers who sell like online programs, who do in-person stuff. And then you got like big celebrity dog trainers. And then you even got like movie dog trainers too, people who just train um, people, dogs around sets or other animals. Little side note, I was in Cancun last week and they have, I know, Did right? You see Chris? I was there for a wedding. I, you know what? <laughs> Were I'm you like, there too? Mike dropped me. And no, I was not there in Cancun. Oh. He was but, the one running through the waves in a Speedo that he shouldn't have been wearing. <laughs> with my ganja. What? <laughs> I was drunk. I was there for a wedding. It was wild. Oh, all right. So back um, to Cancun. And I was not there. No, I'm done. I'm just writing it down. I'm going to Cancun. He was there last Because now it's 2-2-2. Two, two, two. He's been to Cancun and we have not been there this, I mean, the last yeah. 10 months. No. Jeez. Anyway. All right, back. So they had these falcon trainers and this guy was just chilling with a falcon on his arm. And I was like, Oh, I gotta talk to this guy because like I'm a dog trainer, but he's in Spanish. Luckily, so my girlfriend's Colombian. So I was like, Can you talk to him for me, please? And like, I was like, What are you doing? And they train this falcon to go chase off all the other birds around. Um, and so they'll let the falcon go, it'll go chase down the birds and it'll come right back to them. And the way that they did that is they tied a string around its leg so the bird couldn't fly away. And then they gave it lots of treats on his arm. So then the bird is like, Oh, this is home. And this is where I get a lot of good stuff. So it just starts after they said it trained him for about three months. Um, so a fly off, chase away the birds, come back, gets a little treat. And then they just stand there for hours just doing that all day long. I was like, that's a whole nother category I never even thought of. I'm so thinking about that one right now. It, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's, it's cool. Actually, falconry is cool. Not that I'd ever want one to fly back at but me. This is it, this is a resort that has falconeers. Is that what they're called to keep the? Mm -hmm. Is that the phrase? They're, falconeers, the, and they're keeping the the bad birds away Sounds from right. the tourists like Chris. You don't want to be annoyed by birds. That's what I want. Well, if, hey, if I'm going to paradise, um, can all the riffraff please go away? Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> except the guys you know, with the yeah, I, I keep those people away from me. Except the so, guy with the uh, ganja. I'm still stuck on 165 words a dog can learn. That is, I can't uh, even think of 165 words I would want a dog to know. 
But what are some of the things that we would not normally know that you could teach a dog to do besides, you know, pigs paint, things like that. But like an average, reasonably well-trained, you train somebody to train a dog. What are some things that they can do that most people wouldn't know that they could do? Yeah. Um, one of the fun ones, if you go on like TikTok or Instagram, there's bunny, the talking dog, and there's dogs who just have buttons and they have dozens and dozens of buttons. Right. And they have actually shown their dog forming like complete sentences, like my tummy hurts. And like, then the dog goes and throws up and it's like, what is happening right now? Yeah. Um, <laughs> Uh, but basic ones are just like, if, if like I have four buttons that I normally teach, one of them is bedtime. So like if I hit the bedtime button, it's like, okay, we're going to bed. We're taking a nap. Um, one is train. So I kind of put them in the state of like, okay, we're going to learn right now. So get ready. We're going to learn something. Um, another one is play. So it's just like, okay, you're free. You can do whatever you want. It's just like, go be a dog. Um, and then the other one's potty. And that's like, I have to go pee, right? It's very helpful for your dog to tell you they have to go pee. So you can open the door for them, let them out. Uh, so that's where I start. And, but you could have buttons for, for walk, for, um, for cuddle, for, um, when you say button, hurt. what do you mean button? Um, like, uh, you know, that, like that was easy, you know, the buttons that talk. Yeah. Easy, easy button. Easy button. Yeah, that okay. was easy. Uh -huh. yeah. So there's buttons like that, but you can just talk into it and be like potty. And then you press it and I'll say potty. So you can program to say whatever you want. So you all talking buttons. <laughs> You, you just... we, you know, he actually just broke the show yeah. you know what everybody's the, you're, you're driving the car you're you're walking you're doing whatever you're doing listen to us he, he just broke the show because we're like to the point one, two, <laughs> so does the understand. dog come and punch the button that says potty yeah mm -hmm. dude how cool is that that is ridiculous i think i'm gonna get some of these things i'm gonna do that to some of my employees i'm coming to go chris needs food <laughs> play time for chris yeah Chris is mad. Everybody run. <laughs> <laughs> That's a funny one. That's more of like a warning to them. If you're able to train them to where, I think you press a button and then you're, someone comes in and they hand you a Snickers bar and they're like, you're not the same without your Snickers That's exactly bar. right. That would be it. Chris needs Snickers. The <laughs> donker needs food. So people that are high enough up on the, the value ladder go home with uh -huh. a certain amount of buttons that the dog either you can press the button or the dog can press the button and you can communicate each other with each other that way. Is that what I'm hearing? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Like at first I start pressing the button. So like the dog has no idea what's happening at first and it's the same thing, right? It's, it's just an association. So our brains do this naturally all the time um, for all sorts of stuff, right? If something were to, I don't know, right. The AT&T service went out recently, right? That was big news this morning. Mm-hmm. You saw that? That was a that was a uh, crusher, right? So when uh -huh. you didn't have your cell phone, I literally had a guy say, I'm in my house. The cell phones aren't working. I don't know if I should leave. I'm like, <laughs> like, like they're gonna blow you're, up. You're having kid me right now, right? <laughs> right. What, what, no, yeah, you're going to work, bro. Yeah. You know, download your schedule. This was an employee? Yeah. Oh god. Yeah, I think he was he actually was joking. He was joking. I'm, no, no, no kidding aside. He he was joking with me. But all right, so go back to this, right? We lost that major functionality. Now what? Uh, so you 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 already demonstrated for me, right? His association was, I don't have a phone. I can't go to work. Like, I don't got GPS. I can't get to work now. Or sometimes people are like, I don't have a, or like the phone service went out. It was a hacker, right? And now some people are like, oh, there's a big hacking thing. And then some people are like, oh, it's the solar flares. It's the sun, right? Because the sun's acting up right now too, as it does, as it always has. Um, and it's flipping its poles. So- uh, people create associations through like, this means this, who knows what it means right now. Like we got to do a little bit more due diligence to find out what exactly was the cause, but our brains are always looking for, what does this mean? We're always searching for meaning. You're searching for meaning. When you see me, you're like, is he cool? Is he not cool? Right. Are we going to get along? Are we not? So your brain is always focusing for meaning. So for the dog, I show him this button means we're going to train. You're going to get a lot of good treats right now. So when I press this button, you should go into a state of focus, right? And then I also sync up smells to it. So I have essential oils and so I'll sm spray a smell. So I'll use their olfactory, which is the strongest for dogs. It's really powerful for humans too. I don't know if you can remember like your mom's cooking or your favorite meal. 
Right. Um, most of the time you can like smell or taste that. Or if you were to think of a lemon, you can like get the sour taste and you maybe even start drooling right now. All these things are classically Pavlonian associated. And I do the same thing with, with the button. So at first when I'm training potty, right? The first like two, three days, I just press the button or sometimes I use bells. Um, both of them are good. Um, and I'll just do it, right? I'll just hit the bells. We'll go out to go potty. After three, four days, the dog's like, oh, okay, every time we go potty, these bells are hit. And then I'll stand by the door after doing it for about a week. And I'll be like, what do you think? You want to go outside? And they're like, yeah, what do I got to do to go outside? And then they'll like hit the buttons or they'll press the button with their paw. They'll hit the, the bells with their nose. And it's like, you're right, let's go outside. And then they're like, oh. And then they get real smart and then they'll start using it for potty. And then they're like, mm, I just want to go outside right now. So then they'll ring it to go outside. And that's like a whole nother part of training but that's like the association part of it so when they press the button it actually says potty or say, yeah. okay have In you ever voice. have you ever messed around by switching up the buttons just to see what they do I mean, do they really know the buttons Alan, or do Alan they... would not be a good dog oh, come on let's call it like it is man Alan, they... you can't screw with the dog's mind man i want to i want to i want to see the look on a dog's face when he's like oh no 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 i, I meant i meant potty and so did they, did they actually learn the location of the button or did they learn the word? That's what I want to know. That's a great question. I can definitely dive into that for you. Damn it. All right. Three, two, one. But still, Hey, uh, three, two, two, you and I are tied. We're in last place right now, Brady. All right. So answer that question. Step it up. For Alan, the so, dog trainer. So at first I do use locations to help give them um, an extra little bit of help. But then I got to do like a, like kind of like a pump fake in basketball, right? So sometimes I'll, as I'm training them, I'll say, instead of their word, I'll say banana or I'll say hopscotch. And I'll be like, are you listening right now? Um, and it's the same thing with the buttons, right? So when they're pressing the buttons, sometimes I do change it. Like one time I was like, bitch, I got to go potty. <laughs> and, <laughs> and so like the button would say that, but it was still next to the door. So they're like, okay, this is the one I hit to go potty, right? Dude, that's how I'm training uh, my dog. <laughs> I love that one. <laughs> hey, Which asshole, go open the door. You know what? I'm in. That's right. <laughs> you know what? I'm jumping. You actually, you're talking my language, my friend. You want me to crap inside or outside? Oh, I got it. I'll yeah. that. Huh? Uh, how about yeah, some right? effing kibble bits? <laughs> <laughs> no, that's how I treat my so. kids. <laughs> Do better, dad. <laughs> I can see you having the family conversation. We're going to go to this new system. Buttons. Yeah. <laughs> my kids are just punching buttons. So my kids are 25 and 22. Now, but if I would have had that at the dinner table, oh my God. dad, this food sucks. Oh, be dad, no more leftovers. <laughs> dad, I don't want to go to bed. Dad. <laughs> I'm like, and I, Dessert, I, I please. Punch it back. Shut up. Shut up. <laughs> you just got one button. <laughs> don't bother, all. dad. I got one button. Leave man. me alone. Shut up. Shut up. Because yeah. <laughs> I said so. That's the second button. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> oh, poor Brady. He's like, you know, I have to go on this uh, circuit. I got to be another these podcast people. I got my name out there and I got to listen to these two idiots talking about yep. pushing buttons. All right. Let's keep going. Um, shall we? Yeah. Let's. All right. Brady, we're coming to the end. Yeah. So let's talk a little bit more about what you're thinking. Like, so here we are, 2024, not just we're, we're time stamping it. Where do you want to be in a year? What do you want to do? What do you want people to know about you? Yeah, in a year, I, I we have this dog facility built, and we're starting to build out these portable dog training facilities, which we're going to have one drop in our backyard here in the next few months because that's what my girlfriend does for a living. She builds out these things, but they make them like super secret squirrel safe for like the Air Force and the Navy and stuff, so no one can listen in or penetrate it um, just in like shipping containers, right? Or she does it in like modular buildings and stuff. But I was like, okay, that'd be really cool just to take this idea. And you don't need permits for those either. So you could literally drop them anywhere. And uh, continuing building this out um, and to have like the prototype already done and finding people to um, to sell those to um, and hiring maybe some like, um, I could do the sales too. I like sales, but some higher end sales people to start taking over that part of my business because I'm more of the artist in it. Than anything like I love training the dogs and I love teaching the people and then sales I've done sales my whole life but I really like to outsource that to other people so yeah so having this franchise opportunity continuing being built by the end of this year um 
so I got my goals right here. Begin construction on dog boarding, daycare, and grooming center. Begin construction on dog training center. Make over $150,000 from dog training and speaking engagements. And then fill out my schedule, my big ass calendar for 2024, which I already did that one. You know, oh, look Jesse at you, big ass big calendar. Ass calendar. He's, he's getting Jess Seitzler in on this one now. That's uh, <laughs> one of our Atlanta homeboys. Uh, yeah. You get your big ass calendar out. I like it. Uh, so it was too mm -hmm. big for my uh, for my office. No, I'm kidding. Uh, but no, I love that. <laughs> so um, I love what you just talked about. You know, wants to sell the portable dog training. He actually hit on this. Uh, you know, you got to know what you're good at and your strengths are, especially when you're trying to scale. And in the beginning, yeah. we have to sell ourselves because you're always selling, man. You go back to the you go back to the boiler room. Always be closing. ABC man, always be closing. Ben Affleck, right? Bam, bam, bam. You have to in the beginning because that's our that's our job, right? Especially as entrepreneurs, we're solopreneurs, because cash is yeah. king, and the only one's going to sell you is you. You always got to be selling. And again, if you're in high school and you don't even want to be an entrepreneur, I went back. I was talking to uh, I talked to high school students every year. As part of this is that you always have to understand you got to be selling, even if you don't think you like yourself. You've got to always be selling. If it seems dirty, you always are selling yourself. So I love what he's talking about, but he's like, I don't want to do that. I want to get the uh, artistry. I want to do this. I want to do that. I'm going to have other people sell it. He's a good product to sell, man. I mean, I know it makes me think maybe it's more for licensing than franchising. Could be. So you're talking to a guy who, uh, Alan, by the way, who's done a lot of uh, franchise support work and he's yeah. been in one. He's managed one. He's gotten out. Now he's a uh, commercial real estate uh, here in Atlanta. So if you need any commercial real estate here in Atlanta, that's Alan Wyatt. Again, we'll push him in the uh, in the details, but I'm I'm sorry it's about Brady. It is about Brady. I'm so sorry that I, I hijacked it from you for oh my god, seconds. he does this every time, Brady. Oh my god, it's always about you. All right, go back I to me, please. Own, I mean, Brady. I need a button. <laughs> Shut up. That was funny. You were talking about high school students and entrepreneurs. When I was like my first or second year, and I only I don't even have my bachelor's or my associate's degree. I'm like three classes away from it. Couldn't pass Spanish. I got a Spanish girlfriend. Um, better move, that's my worth friend. credit. Way no, way better move, my friend. Way better. <laughs> I learn a lot more Spanish that way. Huh? I know a lot of all Spanish the necessities. Way. Exactly. But all this, the right words. This teacher I was with, he was saying that the best entrepreneurs are the D or F students, because yeah, I know, right? No, I just heard this yesterday. I'm in my mastermind. Oh, really? Group. The A students go to the best school or best companies, right? They, 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 the B's go to the, the ones who, um, of course, Chris and, uh, Alan were in them, enterprise mm -hmm. Accenture, right? Mm -hmm. We wanted to be, but C students, you're not worthless. What it shows them is that they become entrepreneurs and the B students end up going to work for the C's or the A's. So my mm -hmm. friend, they're coming to work for you. And so every <laughs> time you show up you go, Hey, B student, hit this button. <laughs> I work for you. I work for you. <laughs> I'm sorry. You want to be a servant leader. I get it. But come on. It's kind of fun. Everyone's way you can say. Uh -huh. No, that's great. You're always selling. If you got D grades, your parents are pissed. You got to find a way to get them not pissed at you. So you got to oh, sell them. <laughs> nice call. See, again. But he he just said this yesterday. We, we were in my mastermind group. The guy was explaining that. And I was like, that is so genius that the C students are told, hey, you guys are worthless. You don't know what to do. And they're like, well, I can't go work for anybody because I can go to in and out Burger and flip burgers all my life. I can go to Apple and be an Apple store store specialist or whatever the hell they call me. Or I can go start my own business, which, by the way, Brady just did. Right. And he's about to kick the shit out of this. I mean, it was actually interesting at Enterprise. There was a, a bit of a kerfuffle a number of decades ago where our COO, and I can't remember if it was on CNN or if it was in Fortune magazine, said – we like to hire from the bottom of the graduating class. And it kind of upset those of us that were working there. But what he was saying is, is, you know, we want people who are well-rounded. We want people who are in the fraternities and the sororities and that they, you know, probably had a little more fun in college rather than focusing just because they can talk to a lot of people and they have natural leadership mm -hmm. skills and all those things that come from not being laser focused and top of the class. So again, niches bring the riches. You're like, Hey, I got to have focus. Yeah. But when you're an entrepreneur, and Alan, you said it earlier, right? You only have so much time. What's the one thing we all have in common with billionaires and people who are broke? We only have a commodity of time. And yeah. you have to learn how to multitask. And we don't teach that in schools. And you and I have talked about that over and over with the kids that we've met. Because uh, we also do a, a, a class with some uh, people who are aspiring entrepreneurs and talk to them about it. Is that you've got to learn to maximize your time and your effort and your network. 
Mm-hmm. Right? Mm-hmm. So big. Mm-hmm. Brady, yeah. this has been the awesome. The hard skills are going away because <laughs> you got AI and everything to help you with this. And I need soft EQ, emotional intelligence skills to connect with people. That's the only way you can keep going forward. AI is taking over so many things. You need like one person to do five people's jobs now. I use I'm gonna, it all I'm going to have my robot clips. emotionally connect with your robot. Yeah, we'll, we'll connect. No. Uh, actually, I, I, I'm doing the paid GPT thing, by the way. Are you really? I am. Oh, I actually had to write me a little line of code for Excel so I could uh, macro something, and it worked. Wow. I, wow. That's, actually, I did the wow. same thing. I went, wow. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's mind blowing. You're, you're talking to an old guy, man. I started on Lotus One Two Three, then Quattro Pro, uh-huh. and then eventually to Excel because I was an engineer uh, as a kid. And uh, as a kid, uh, I thought I was an adult then. I'm still not. No, you're it still doesn't a kid. Matter. Stay a Mental, kid. Mentally, I have guys. a Rugrat sweatshirt. I stay a kid forever. <laughs> I love it. Up. All right, man. I hate to do this, but we have got to go. You know what? I want already gone by. But you know what? I don't think this is the last time we're going to talk to Brady. No. I want to find out what happens next. Hell yeah. I want to, I know one of those push button things. And I, you know what? I might know somebody here in Atlanta who might be one of your test franchisees. We'll talk about this. You still got to find a guinea pig for us to show. Oh, yeah. You got to show us the guinea pig before we go, man. Yeah. Let me go get one of them. (laughs) Oh, my God. We're going real. He's never done this on another podcast, ladies and gentlemen. I haven't. We have a chance. I haven't. All right. Here we go. And so he's picking up the guinea pig and the guinea pig's out. All right. What's the guinea pig's name? We're going to call the guinea pig. Give me a name. Frank. Frank. This one's Joy. Oh, it's Joy. Fucking Frank. It's Joy, my friend. And here comes Joy. Joy is a Looks special like a breed of guinea He's pig. A... Oh, look at the little baby doll. Oh, my God. He's this is precious, cute. my friends. All right. What can Joy do? Yeah. Um, She can follow around a little target stick, but I don't have it in here right now. That's all right. Um, yeah, so we'll she, do play um, by play. So actually, what he has, uh, ladies and gentlemen, is he has all ten decathlon events set up behind him. And here goes Joy going around the decathlon. <laughs> that's a, that's stupid. Oh my god, that's a triple like, Lindy! Oh my god, and here she goes. Can you hear him? Joe is Joy is the best. Oh my god, that's the cutest little thing. Yes. That is super. So they they've learned when I crinkle this bag, they're about to get fed. So they start going crazy. They start chirping really loud. I can hear so him. Now yeah, anytime, I can hear her chirping now. Yeah. Anytime we move any bag, then they start chirping. So they are always keeping fed. Uh-oh. So, but I know, right? Which isn't ideal. So now I'll, I'll knock. And, and she so, quieted down. Oh, she's my God. Quiet, but now I knock. So then they know that like I'm actually going to give them food. I'm going to give them some hay. Oh. Yeah. But, oh, my um, God. This is so cute. <laughs> But yeah, there's lots of fun things. You can, Let's yeah, that thing. they're awesome. They are awesome. I, actually, cute. here, I, you know what? Why then do we can, do this, Alan? You can. This have, is why we podcast. I you want just need a, a, a guinea pig support animal, I, Chris. That would be the best if I came <laughs> through. Could you see me in the in the uh, airport? With your boys like, going to Vegas with your. We're going pig to Vegas. Pig. I'm rolling in big daddy style. I got my big old Elvis glasses on with my fake hair. No, I don't do fake hair, by the way. I, I let it go. Ball, <laughs> I get it. It's good. And, and I come in. I'm like, guys, got my guinea pig. What's his name? Uh, it's her. Her name is Joy. <laughs> but, watch, but watch what Joy can do. And then Joy comes out and just gets all freaking ninja on him. Like, ah! Can I do that? Like going in between your legs, yeah. <laughs> Attacking people when you want them to. Oh, no. That's my No, I want to get you a falcon, though. That'd be cool, too. <laughs> Actually, if that sucker started flying back at me, I don't think I could have my arm sitting there. They'd have to blindfold me because I'd be going, he's yeah, right. You get your arm out. I mean, seriously, dude, he's flying at you. I mean, it's a falcon flying right at you. A bird of killing and destruction. I would be like, boom, I'm in the, I'm in the sand so fast. <laughs> my white ass sitting there and he's pecking it and just killing it. <laughs> okay. Should we ask the final four questions? I, I think we dead? should. I think we've really... Gone off the rails on this one. <laughs> I don't. I don't know if we can get, get back on there. All right, uh, Brady. You've obviously uh, you use coaching. You're obviously a student of the game, and that's the biggest part. You said, "Hey, I wasn't the best student in the world." You are the best student of the game. So, give us a book that you would recommend to all of our uh, listeners out there. Yeah, for one really great book, and this book is you guys mentioned it earlier. Like, how do you train your partner? Right, and not just dogs. Anyone can be trained. But the book is called Don't Shoot the Dog. 
and it was written by Karen Pryor to help. It's funny, um, individual sports move a little bit faster in terms of um, taking in new information than team sports do sometimes. So like professional tennis players are ahead of the curve or professional golfers or they have visualization coaches. They're they're doing a lot of things different. And now NFL teams are catching on. You'll see a lot of people, they'll do visualization stuff. Um, but this book goes into some of those details of how do you set up, how do you have the perfect golf swing every time? The trick is to have um, an anchor that you could um, subconsciously program into your body, even a song, right? Sometimes you can listen to a song and it'll take you to a certain state where you feel empowered. If you, I start listening to Rocky, man, I can do anything. Just put on a Rocky soundtrack. Um, but if you were to set something up, and this book goes into detail about that. So that one helps me a lot with dog training. Sounds like hypnosis. I got Alan, you and I are getting trained up. And you're going to my member guest with me, and we're going to kick the crap. We're going to visualize the shit out of these guys with a song. Like <laughs> and you're getting big. And what the, what's that song going to be? I, I I mean, we got to figure out that great. Song. I already got mine. All right, I'm like, I'm like, right. no, that's great. Uh, awesome. Going to write that down. That is "Don't Shoot the Dog" by Karen Pryor. All right. Yep. What is the favorite feature of your home? I'm a home repair guy. I'm a home remodeler. We love doing this stuff. What's the favorite feature of your house? Favorite feature, we got an inflatable hot tub from Costco for 300 bucks. And I don't use it for hot tubs. I use it for a cold plunge. And so it's 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 great. And so it's it's filtered. The water's clean. It, and if I want it as a hot tub, I can heat it up. But All right. I'm such a wimp. Plunge. And I grew up in Michigan. Um, I used to do the sauna and the snow plunge. And I keep hearing about okay. this ice plunge. What do you keep your number at for your ice plunge? Uh, it's about 50, 55 degrees. Think about that yeah. for a minute there, big guy. It's not called shrinkage. All right, we're going to keep going. <laughs> Some people go crazy. It's like you can get it like freezing temperatures, but no, nah, my 55 degrees, you still got to wrestle with your brain a little bit and say like, I say we do. <laughs> I say go, we go. Yeah, man. I'm, I'm telling you, this guy said, no, he won't. <laughs> yeah, I got into my knees and I'm like, that's good. I know. Oh, I, uh, I feel better. I mean, I, I, you know, I like to work out. And one of the guys who was in incredible shape says, oh, you got to do the ice plunge. I'm like, yeah. He goes, where are you from? I said, Michigan. He goes, well, you don't got no problem. I'm like, yeah, when I was a kid. No That's problem. why I live in Atlanta. <laughs> <laughs> There's a reason I'm not here, yeah. my friend. Yeah. And uh, <laughs> I said, a cold shower would even knock me down. He said, That's actually how you're supposed to start. You could work your way into it. I've been looking into it. I hate cold showers like, more, though. Really? Cold showers. Because like my association with my shower is like, I'm going to go relax and I'm going to go like clean up. And then I do a cold shower and it fucks with my brain. I was like, I don't even want to shower anymore. But if I separate them and like, this is like my hard things in the garage, my shower, I can still relax. So I was like, I'm not fucking with my relaxing time. <laughs> Dude, <laughs> I just like, you know what? My separate torture um, chamber. So we're, we're obviously, we, uh, you probably can tell, uh, this isn't a, a studio set. This is our, our, my bar in my basement, but my pool is right out here to the left. And we're in Atlanta and I, I just checked my okay, temperature. It's, it's 53. There you go. You got a big yeah. cold plunge out I'm there. I'm cold plunging. I'm not really. I'm going to jump in. I'll probably ankle post. TikTok that. I'm gonna, uh, you know what? That would be fun. There you go. I challenge you. Challenge. All right. Oh, you know what? Challenge accepted. Okay. I'm going to ankle plunge. <laughs> no, All right. No, no, no. What? Oh, the whole thing? Oh, yeah. Oh, my God. The whole I don't know. Thing. I keep hearing it's great. Cannonball. Cannonball. All right. You know what? And I'm if you guys want to stay young, it takes all, it makes all of your skin tight. Like It's really good for cortisol levels. It's There's a lot of benefits to it. So. Too late. I know. Too late. It's too late for me. Yeah, I don't late. think I can right. reverse no, these aging late. facts. Question C. Reverse. I, question C. All right. We are uh, big into customer service because we talk about this all the time because we're customer service freaks. What is a customer uh -huh. service pet peeve of yours when you're out there and you're the customer? Um, when I'm the customer, um, biggest pet peeve, man. I don't let myself get annoyed by those things. I got, I've done customer you can tell service he's too for chill. so long. Actually, he's when I was going to ask, pig. I was he's, got his guinea pig. he's got a guinea pig in his hands. I mean, Joy just ate out of his hands with A. He, he worked at In-N-Out Burger. I mean, <laughs> Jesus, Lord, my God, the, the crap he must have seen there in the retail. I guess the worst thing is like, I'll go to Colombia sometimes. I don't speak Spanish. And then I can't get someone's attention and they just ignore me. And if you ignore me, I'm like, I want to give you my money. Just like, come struggle through this conversation with me so I can order another cerveza, por favor. <laughs> like, I, you know what? Yeah, I think you need to bring that little uh, tapper that you have and you just bring yeah. it and go. Cerveza. 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 Baño. Cerveza. Baño. 
My son is fluent in Spanish too, so he hates it when I do that. He goes, Dad, you know more Spanish than that. I'm like, yeah, well, it's more fun when I piss you off. <laughs> All right, fourth question. Give us a uh-huh. DIY nightmare story. I'm talking about, you know, dogs fleeing the place because you're putting the house on fire. <clears throat> Perhaps you dismembered somebody. Maybe you flooded something. I don't know. Maybe you took down a, the entire town of Austin. I don't know. Just explore your mind for a minute. Yeah, I almost wonder if we should change yeah. this question for the first time. It just, I mean, he's got dogs around him. There's got to be a pretty gnarly story in there somewhere. All right. I'll take a dog story. Hell yeah, I will. I've got, I got too many of those. Yeah, gnarly I can share story. the most recent terrible one. This one was actually, this one caused some PTSD. I mean, we just got over it with going to Cancun. I'll keep it short because I got to listen too. But um, we rescued a dog and we had her for two months and she was just a rescue. Um, and I'd been training her and she had been fine in the crate, but we went to Phoenix and we had, we had a different guinea pig. Like these two are new guinea pigs. We got them about a month ago. The other one was about two years old. Her name was Blue. And this dog got out of the crate while we were away and she got into the guinea pig's crate and, and killed her. Mm. Um, what? Get the fuck. What? Yeah. Fucking death miss. You know what we, off, we often say? That was the worst. Death. Remember? I'm mad. You know what? I'm mad for all guinea pig mm-hmm. lovers out there. And I'm I'm putting myself in that category now because I'm thinking about getting a guinea pig. That's I, brutal. I think yeah, I'm going to adopt it was, Dude, it was, that's pretty it, bad. It, it was that brutal. Sucks. It was brutal. Oh my God. Um, and, but, you know, there's a lesson in everything. So you can find the gratitude in it. And luckily we were actually at, because I get a coach, right? Um, this is a different coach than Nick, but we were actually at his house when it happened. And the, our friend who was watching him, she wasn't here at the time. She came like three hours earlier and then she saw everything and she's like, what do I do? And it was a whole, I talked to my coach. I was like, cause my girlfriend's in the middle of like cooking a Colombian dinner for us too. And I was like, do I wait till after dinner to tell her? Do I tell her now? And um he told me a brilliant story about when an animal passed away because everyone's had an animal pass away and um they didn't tell their son and their son was pissed at him for months because he didn't get to say goodbye because they thought he couldn't handle it and so i had the conversation with my girlfriend it was really challenging and we mourned for weeks um before we were able to get um to move past the event but for me too it was like even coming back to this dog i was like i rescued this dog and saved her from being euthanized and now we lost our guinea pig we've had for two years. So like I traded a life for a life. Not thumbs up right now, Apple. Um, <laughs> I was like, I was yeah, like we did you, not do that. Because I'm not thumbs up. And dude, I'm actually, I'm actually tearing up over here a little bit. Because, you know, all right. So um, uh, let me give you a little marriage advice. And then we're going to get out of here. You give them a piece of information. When they get that information is not the problem. They now have the information. So if you gave it to her two hours later, you gave her two hours of more fun than you've had because you had to carry that burden. And when they come back at yeah. you on that one, you're like, hang on, babe, I held that burden for two more hours because I didn't want you to suffer with that. Like that move. Wow. Huh? Have you actually tried that? I have. Did it work? Never. I got an Italian wife, man. I get my ass kicked every fucking time, <laughs> but that's a different story. We're out of here, man. This has been a great time. This is Brady. Yeah. You've got to go there. ND dog training Instagram. How else can we find you? Let's go. Um, there we go. There's some lasers oh, for you. Oh, he's got lasers. He's got lasers going. <laughs> Gotta go YouTube. My God, he is Mr. X. <laughs> Alan, we're yeah, I just follow, <laughs> follow so when you me do on. the cold plunge, put some effects on your TikTok. Well, I think we're going to have effects. Yeah. But right. we're not going to worry about those. Right. It's going to be a <laughs> beep, 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 boop, boop, beep, beep, boop, boop, boop. I don't think you can say all that. You can. Let's go. How can we find you, Brady? You flip. Yeah. Um, Instagram, TikTok, um, Nancy, Drew, dog training. Uh, my website, newdirectiondogtraining.com. Yeah, the, I'm training my dog how to ride a skateboard right now. So I have a seven-year-old dog, a seven-month-old dog, and I bought this skateboard. It was a kid's skateboard on Amazon, and I thought this thing would be like half the size of a regular skateboard. But when I got this thing, it's like a quarter of the size. It's like literally this long. And I was like, I'm going to return this thing. And my brother's helping me edit some videos too. He's like, no. You have to keep it. You have to train her how to ride that thing. So we're at two weeks in of training her to ride this thing. I got a little leash tied to it. I'm starting, she can put on her four paws. I'm starting to pull her around. Now I got to teach her to like move it herself. But if you want to follow us along that journey, like give us a follow. And Dude, I'm definitely following you on that. So I am old, but I am the oldest TikToker probably on the planet because I love TikTok and I, I TikTok the crap out of Alan. He hates it. So 
We do it. <laughs> Dude, this has been a blast. Pretty fuck. Dog trainer, dog whisperer to the world. ND dog training. Go figure it out. We get out of here. Man, if you didn't learn something, Dude, that sucks on you because you could have learned something about how to train your dog, train your guinea pig, or figure out what it's like to try to scale a business when you're a solopreneur because he's going through those struggles right now. We all do. We've all been there. We've all tried it. And if you haven't gotten there yet, don't worry. It's coming. You'll struggle too. We got to struggle up that mountain. Let's get there. We're all going to the mountaintop. We're going to the stacks. Let's get out of here. Cheers, everybody.